Okay, so my Super Nintendo PC has um, started moving along again. And uh, originally what I created was this um, harness for the, well, it's the front of the Super Nintendo. You plug the controller straight into this. And this is, a, I stripped out a Mayflash USB controller. Uh, and then that's attached to a USB plug. So I've got, uh, so I can control the Super Nintendo PC with the original uh, Super Nintendo controllers without having to do any modification to the controllers themselves. Uh, unfortunately, this Mayflash um, USB converter is very, very, very dodgy. It doesn't accept always, even official ones, it doesn't recognize them sometimes. So what I've done is I've uh, went online and I found another company, it's Rafnet. There's a guy in Canada and he makes these, and this is... Uh, a USB to it actually takes four Super Nintendo controllers or Nintendo controls either or, and you just wire them up along here, and um, it shows up as two separate controllers on the computer, one USB. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, uh, hook one end USB end not to a plug but to a USB header. This will go into the motherboard directly, which means the whole thing can be powered internally. I don't need to um, have this a, a plug coming out the back of the computer at all. So it'll all work on the inside, and I've got the wire stripped and ready to just solder onto there. And then I've got to just desolder all these connections here, all along here, and then reuse these wires and uh, plug that into here. And then I will have a uh, functioning Super Nintendo USB converter. Uh, which should work with any of my controllers. The other thing I've got here is finally I've got a um, uh, red, green and blue LED, 5mm LED, so that I can have uh, blue power and uh, probably red um, hard disk activity all under one lamp because on this uh, particular, on the Super Nintendo controller ports, there is in fact just on this side, can you see here there's a little housing there and that's the original um, controller board went across the whole back here and it had the LED light was on the controller board so obviously what I'm going to do is just fit this into there so that when you um, put the lid back on it shines through where the original LED was uh, so I should be able to get that wired up today ready for the um, installation so uh, quite a few things to be done today. Okay, so after some desoldering, I've got uh, rid of this. That's gone, and some resoldering, and I have the new board attached to a header, and that goes straight onto the new board. And then this is connected up. So these uh, two wires aren't connected to anything, so I haven't quite decided what to do with this. I'll probably just uh, cut them off back here somewhere, and then. Uh, be done with it but now to test it and see if it works okay so I've got it uh, plugged in I had a, a little problem initially because the uh, red and green wire weren't uh, installed properly on the plug end so I sorted that one out and uh, that goes to the board and then to the controller ports there's the controller ports PC and here's the computer and here's the controller and I don't know if you can see, it moves, things light up, buttons, it all works. Glorious. Well, the controller works, and now it's time to look at the LED. Now, I just thought uh, this is a common cathode, which means uh, the negative is the same, and you just adjust the positive to make the lights come on and off, the red and uh, blue I'm using here. I've got the green one, I've left it out. I've still left a, a leg there just in case I might want to use the green for something, maybe to signify wireless is on or not, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, blue light that I wanted to switch on and show that the power's going, that works fine. They just plug that straight into the header. Plug it straight into the, the header here, onto the motherboard, and that just lights up the blue. Unfortunately, the... Uh, red one I was using for the LED for the hard drive it works in a very different way the hard drive actually says it stays on all the time and then goes off it's a very very complicated way of um, making the light come on and off on and off on and off so what you have to do is you have to separate the circuit uh, from the light 
to the ground because you're sharing the same ground. So all it does is it reads the ground for both lights from the blue one, which means it just stays on all the time. So you get a lovely purple light all the time and you don't get a red light. So what you have to do is you have to use this. I've got a little breakout board here. I don't know if you can see it. And inside there is a little chip there. I'm only using one, uh, one side. It's a dual uh, opto isolator. So basically what it is, is he's got a little um, infrared LED on one side of the chip and an infrared receiver on the other. So I've got the LED for the hard drive attached straight to this LED here. And then the LED for the red LED is plugged into here. And then I'm taking the 5 volts uh, and resisting it down from... I'm actually using the USB board here so I'm taking it from the USB plug for the controller port just to keep it all tidy what I'm going to do is hot glue all this together so it's one nice little unit and uh, what it does is is when the LED works uh, on the hard drive it switches on the actual LED here so that now that the ground is uh, separated so that now the uh, red and blue LED lights uh, flash independently so um, I'm just going to show that now that's how it works in theory Let's see if it works in practice. All right, so the uh, USB header is plugged in here, and then just along here, you can see here that's the LED he header. On the left is the hard drive activity, and on the right is the power LED. And then that, there's the switch, a little short switch over there to test it out. And that goes here, and there you can see the LED light here, and the controller will sit nicely on there. It's, uh, this out. So um, once I know it works, I'm going to hot glue all this in place and tidy all the wires up so it's just one compact unit. All I do is just slot it in and plug it in. And here we go, we switch on and we get blue light. I don't know if you can see that. And then red light when it flashes. So actually, I never get blue or red, I only get blue when it's on and purple to signify hard drive activity. And it's a very, very bright light actually. I'm just trying to see if I can get a better look at it. Um, so I've got it here. This is what it'll look like. You see where it's blue, just to show that it's on. And then whenever there's hard drive activity, it goes pinkish purple. Let's see. So you can see that's blue, and then every so often it'll just flash a little bit pink. Just when there's a bit of hard drive activity. I think that's a lot better. You can see that a lot clearer now. Blue, and then if I shut down, there'll be some hard drive activity. And shut down. You get a nice pink while the hard drive works. There you go, and that's it, all done.